All right, so we'll, we'll get started. Um, those of you that are here, I wrote your names down. You will get credit for the notes for staying all the way through this. Um, shouldn't take long. It's basics of circles. We're going to talk about circumference and area, um, but we want to talk about the parts. Um, I'm going to go over the notes, solutions, because it's all written in um, that I sent to you. I sent it last week, but remember, we, I told you it was for this week. I also sent it to you again this week. If you need it, let me know. I can send you the link again. But let's go over the vocabulary really quickly. And um, you know most of these things. Um, there's a little picture that goes with the definition and the, the term. But uh, let me know if you, like, you're confused or you've never heard of that thing before. So of course, a circle, OK? Um, it's just a set of points. I know a circle, you just your definition is, oh, it's a round thing. But it's really a set of points that is equidistant or the same distance from the center of a given point. So right here, we have circle P because point P is the center. That's the name of the circle, circle P. Okay, And every point away from P on the circle is the same distance. And we call that R, or radius, which we'll talk about next, radius. So a segment from the end of a circle to the center is called the radius. Okay. Next is a chord. If you have um, two points on the circle that meet together, that's a chord. Kind of like a guitar string, you can play a chord. I, I don't know. Diameter. So diameter kind of combines radius and chord. So diameter is a chord, but it goes through the center. Okay. Goes through the center. So if it goes to the center, well, we know from here to here is R, the radius, and from here to here is R, another radius. So we can think of the diameter as two radii, okay? Radii is the plural of radius. So whenever I say diameter, your brain should say, oh, that's two radiuses or two radii or two times radius, as it says right here in the definition. Diameter is two times the radius. Because okay, it's twice as long, it goes all the way across. All right, secant. A secant is a line that intersects the circle in two places. So a secant has a chord in it, but it goes beyond that. It's an entire line that cuts through the circle at two places. Okay. We can also have another line that crosses the circle, but it only touches it at one point. So uh, this is called a tangent. We have a line that touches the circle here at Q and only touches it once. It doesn't go through it, it just touches it, at, and that's called a tangent, touches it at one point. And the point where the tangent touches the circle is called the point of tangency. So this line right here, this line PR, touches the circle at Q, so Q is the point of tangency because it's the point at which the tangent line touches or intersects the circle. Okay, any questions on this first page of vocabulary? And don't forget, you got to unmute yourself to so I can hear you. Okay, we good? All right, let's go to the next page. Okay, so now if we look at the center of the circle, and we have two points that's connecting two radius to two radii. Okay. This angle right here, because it's made with the center point, is a central angle. Okay. That's an angle where the vertex is at the center. Okay. We can also have another angle that's not at the center, like if you look here, and call that an inscribed angle. So here. I have a point on the circle and two other points on the circle, and they form an angle. And this angle that's formed is not at the center, so it's not a central angle. It's an inscribed angle. It's inscribed inside the circle. OK, so we have two kinds of angles, one that's at the center, central angle, duh, center, central center, and then an inscribed angle. Then we have, if we have two points on the circle and we connect them around on the circle, this part is called an arc. 
the curvy part that connects those two points is the arc. And this is the symbol for arc. We would call this arc, arc AB. Put that little arc sign over AB. That would be arc AB. Okay, so I don't know if you notice, but when we make an arc, it can go two different ways. AB can go the small way, or it can go all the way around and connect the long way. That's also an arc. Okay, there's two different, so AB is like, which way are we going, mister? We're gonna go the small way or the long way? Well, we have two names for those. We have one that's called the minor arc, or the short way of going from A to B. And we have the major arc. That goes the long way. So the minor arc is the short way. The major arc is the long way. Okay. Well, mister, how do we know if I say A, B, how do I know it's the short or the long? Well, if it's the short, you're only going to have two letters. So right here, we're going A, B. So we're going the short way. If we want to go the long way, we have to have another point in between. So we know we're going the long way. And we're going ACB. We would call this major arc arc ACB to let the person looking at this know, hey, we're going the long way and we're crossing through C, this other point. If we're going the short way, we're not crossing through C. We're just going straight through A to B. It kind of reminds me like when I used to um, walk to my, my cousin's, my aunt's house actually, when I was a kid, you know, there'd be a dog at a certain house that I didn't want to get in front of. So if that dog wasn't there, I'd take the short way to her house. If the dog was there, I'd have to go all the way around um, to go to her house in like three, four, five extra blocks. But I didn't get bit, so it was worth it to do the major arc. So that's kind of what here. So make sure major arc has three, three points to it. And then I think you've heard of this in a semicircle. A semicircle is an arc that is on the diameter, right? So here's the diameter, and the diameter goes right through the middle. And semicircle, remember, just means half a circle, right? So it's an arc, and the endpoints are the diameter. Okay, and it has to go through the diameter because it is halfway. It is right through the middle. And when we measure arcs, and we'll talk about that later, uh, maybe in a couple weeks, um, a semicircle arc is always 180 degrees always 180 degrees okay any questions on the definitions those are the last six definitions any questions there remember unmute yourself and uh and ask me if you have any questions i'm looking no one's unmuting themselves you're all good i don't believe you i feel like i'm in class right now where i'm saying any questions and everyone's like yeah we're good and then uh, you hire all these people. I don't know how to do the homework. But why didn't you ask questions? I don't know. Any questions? Y'all can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I was just making sure because it was very silent. Okay, thank you for that. All right, so let's go on to the formulas, which is what we're going to use. We're going to use area circumference. We're going to use arc length later. We're going to use arc length later, but we'll still go over them. So area. Area of a circle, don't forget. Area means how much stuff is inside, right? How much area it covers. And right here, we're going to use r for the radius, and we need the radius for area. And all it is is pi r to the second power, or pi r squared. And do, do you guys remember what pi is? We actually missed pi day. Anyone remember what pi is? OK, I can hear you screaming, but you're on mute. It's OK. Yes, it's 3.14. It goes on forever, but we basically just use 3.14. 3.14, 3.14, dot, dot, dot. But 3.14 is fine. Okay, That's how to find the area, how much stuff is inside the circle. So we're going to need the radius. So we need to know the length of the radius. Circumference, there are two formulas, but they're basically the same formula. If you know the radius, and first of all, circumference, is the distance around a circle. So the circumference is basically the perimeter of the circle. Okay, how much distance around? So depending on what you know, you're going to use the formula. So if you know the radius, if you just know the radius from the center to the end, 
then you use circumference equals two times pi times radius, two pi r. If you happen to know the diameter, if you know all the distance all the way across, then you would use pi times d. Now this makes sense because what did I tell you diameter was earlier? Diameter is just two radii together. So if you look here at this formula, we have two and r, that's two radii, two times radius. So that's the same thing as diameter. So pi d is the same thing as two pi r. Okay. So which one are you gonna use? It depends on the information that they want you to find or the information that they give you in the problem. Okay, so these are the two we're gonna focus on in this packet. Um, really quick, arc length, this is this, this uh, cursive L, equals x times c over 360. Y 360, because there's 360 degrees in the entire circle. C is the circumference. X is the degree of the arc, which we'll talk about later. Okay, so those are your three formulas. Um, we're going to use area circumference in this packet, which I think you did in sixth and seventh and sixth and seventh grade, if you remember. Okay, so let's go. Um, now here, down here, if you want to test yourself, uh, even though all the answers are here, you could. Um, use the one without the answers and just try to figure out which of these parts are these parts right here and then you can check your work down here like you could say hmm ux goes from the middle to the end that's a radius wy does not go through the middle but it touches the ends that's the chord ry at the ends, it touches the ends of a circle, but it goes to the middle, so that's a diameter. So just go around and look at all these pieces, test yourself. Uh, LQ, right, it touches the edge of a circle, but it doesn't touch it in two places, it only touches the one place. That's a tangent, right, and so on and so forth. Okay, so test yourself out and look at your answers. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, so before we go on to doing the formulas, any questions on these first three pages before I start doing the formulas and all that stuff? I'm gonna let you know right now, this is the intro to circles. So this should be the easiest packet. If you're having problems, that's okay. Don't just think, oh, Pacheco said it's easy. So if I don't know it, I'm dumb. No, it's the, it should be the easiest part. So this is the important part. Let me know if you have questions. Don't feel dumb, please. All right, so we're gonna do area. That's circumference. So at the top, we write the area formula. Area is pi r squared. And then we write the circumference formula, which is circumference is two pi r, or we should write the other one. Circumference is pi times diameter. Same formula. Okay. Oops, number one should have a circle here. What's going on? This should be a circle, and I believe from here to here is 12 meters, right? So the radius is 12 meters. So if we want to find the area for one through four, if we want to find the area, here's the formula. Area equals pi r squared. In our case, r is 12. We just put a 12 for there. 12 squared is 144. 144 times pi, if we push into a calculator, it's approximately 45, 452.39 meters squared remember when we're taking area it's squared it's meters times meters so it's meters squared because our radius is meters we also multiply the units 12 meters times 12 meters is 144 meters squared okay number two remember area equals pi r squared what do they give us here in this problem they give us the diameter but I don't want diameter for area. I want radius. So if the diameter is 18, the radius is what? Well, I feel like I'm in class still. Silence, total silence. The radius is half, remember? Because a diameter is two radii together. So if the whole thing's 18, then that means this is nine inches and this is nine inches. So a radius is nine inches. So my radius is nine, so I substitute r with 9 and then 9 squared is 81 pi and don't forget inches times inches is inches squared so if i put this in my calculator 81 
times 3.14, I get 254.47 inches squared. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. I wanna... Yes. Okay, five through eight are asking for circumference. Okay, same thing. Whatever they give you, use that formula. So for number five, what do they give us? Do they give us the radius or the diameter? Radius, mister. Thank you. Yes, the radius. So if they're giving us the radius, we're going to use circumference equals two pi r. We're going to use that formula, the one that has the radius. So two and pi are just numbers. We just need the r. r is seven. So we put seven for r. Seven times two is 14. 14 pi, if we push that into our calculator, that's 14 times 3.14, right? And we get 43.98. And don't forget, millimeters, but it's no millimeters squared. It's just millimeters. Okay, we're not multiplying millimeters times millimeters. It's just R here. So it's just millimeters, not millimeters squared. Circumference is the distance around the circle, not squares. Area has squares because you're multiplying, you're squaring them. If I look at number seven, what do they give us? They don't give us the radius, they give us the diameter, mister. Thank you. Give us the diameter. So I can do it two ways. I can still use circumference equals two pi r if I figure out the radius is 58, or I can use circumference equals pi times d. And diameter is 58, so that's where we get 58 pi. In this example, they did circumference equals two pi r. They figured out r was 29. That's too much work. Don't do that. If they give you diameter, just use diameter. Circumference equals pi times diameter. 58 pi, plus that into your calculator. 58 times 3.14, and we get 182.21 yards. Not yard squared, just yards. We only have squared if it's area. Okay, any questions on how to find area or circumference if I give you a radius or if I give you a diameter? No questions? I don't believe you. All right, one last thing. What if they give you the circumference or they give you the area? Can you find the diameter or the radius? So look at number nine. Oh no, words, mister. Yes, yes, but it's not that hard. Find the diameter, so I want to know what the diameter is, with a circumference of 65.97. So they want circumference and they want the diameter. So they give you circumference and they want the diameter. So I'm going to use this formula, circumference equals pi times d, and I'm going to fill in what I know. I'm going to substitute what I know. I know circumference, so I'm going to put 65.97 for circumference. Pi, I know pi, that's 3.14, right? And D is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to solve for D. So 65.97 equals 3.14D. I'm going to divide both sides by 3.14. Cancel, cancel. So diameter equals 65.97 divided by 3.14, which is 21. And that's meters. And we can put the D on this side, and there's our answer. Any questions on what I just did? To know what formula to use, look at the information they give you. They gave you circumference, so bam, your brain should go, ah, oh, I'm gonna use the circumference formula. And then they want diameter, that tells you use the circumference formula that has diameter in it to make your life easier. Okay, number 10, they want you to find the radius with, of a circle with circumference of 21.99. So now they want the radius, so we're gonna use circumference but we're not going to use the circumference equals pi d. We want the radius, so we're going to use circumference equals 2 pi r because it has radius in it, and that's what we're looking for. So again, let's substitute. C is 21.99. 2 is 2. Pi is pi because pi is just a number. R, we don't know. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. Divide both sides by 2 pi. Cancel, cancel. So radius equals... 21.99 divided by 2 pi. Now, some of your calculators have the symbol pi in it. You can go ahead and use that if you want to. If not, 
then you would just do this 21.99 divided by 2 times 3.14 or 21.99 over what's 2 times 3.14 6.28 punch that into your calculator and you will get 3.5 and what don't forget your units what units are we talking about feet Any questions? So 11, 12, 13, 14 are doing the same thing. They're giving you circumference or area. They want you to find radius or diameter. So you kind of have to plug in what you know into the formula and work and solve for what, you, what they're asking for, either radius or diameter. We good? Any questions on 9 through 14? Right? We're using the formulas, but now we're using the formulas to find radius or diameter. First, we use the formulas to find area or circumference. Next, we use the formulas to find radius or diameter. And lastly, we're going to work between the formulas, meaning we're going to have to use both formulas. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at number 15. Find the area of a circle with a circumference of 26 pi feet. Okay, so I want the area, but they give me circumference. So let's think about it. What do I need for area of a circle? What's the one piece of information I need for the area of a circle? Anybody? Here it is. There's the formula. What do I need? Anybody? Hmm. Did you did you all just come into the Zoom room and just walk away from the computer and like, all right, when he's done, I'll come back and I'll, I'll pretend I was there the whole time. Wow. Nobody? All right. We need the radius. We need the radius. So if I go back to 15, we need the radius. So how am I going to get the radius? Well, they give us the circumference. So if I need the radius, then I'm going to use the circumference formula that has radius. So circumference equals 2 pi r. We're going to use that formula. Okay. And then we know the circumference is 26 pi. So if it's 26 pi, we can substitute c, or circumference, with 26 pi. And 26 pi equals 2 pi r. Now I want to get the r by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. 2 pi, and guess what happens to these pi's? They cancel out. And we're left with 26 divided by 2. And what's 26 divided by 2? 13. These cancel, these cancel. So the radius is 13. So now that I have the radius, now I'm going to plug it into the area formula, pi r squared. And so the area is pi r squared. We know the r is 13. So plug in 13 to there. So area equals pi times 13 squared. 13 squared times 13 squared is 169, so I get 169 pi. If I punch that into my calculator, 169 times 3.14, I get 530.93 feet squared because this is area, so it's feet squared. All right, guys. You want me to do one more? What number do you want me to do? I'll do one more of these, and I'll answer any questions you have. Which one would you like me to do? 18. 18. All right. I was kind of looking at that one. You read my mind. All right. So find the area. So again, we're going to find the area. So that's the second thing we're going to do of a circle with circumference of 131.95 meters. All right. So again, area, we need radius. So I'm going to use circumference equals 2 pi r to find the radius. And so my circumference is 131.95. So 131.95, I substitute that for C, equals 2 pi r. I want to get the r by itself. Divide both sides by 2 pi. 2 pi. And remember, 2 pi, this means 2 times 3.14, which is 6.28. So if you want to just put 6.28 there, you can. And 131.95 divided by 6.28 is 21. So the radius is 21. Now that I have my radius, let's take it over here in the area formula. Area equals pi r squared. When we know r is 21, so 
area equals pi times 21 squared. 21 squared is 441 times pi. Put that in your calculator. 441 times 3.14 is approximately 1385.44. Don't forget, meters squared, square meters. Okay, so this is the third part where you use both formulas. You use one formula to find the radius or diameter. Usually it's radius. And then you plug, use that radius to find the area. All right, are there any questions? That was kind of a lot. You got a lot of vocabulary, pieces of circles, what, what those pieces are. We have three formulas, but we're using only two, area circumference. And remember, circumference has two formulas, one with radius, one with diameter. Then here's this name that parts. Make sure you can test yourself and see which, if you know what the names of the parts are, and all the answers are here. Um, can you find area circumference with the formula if I gave you radius or diameter? That's what the first part was. Can you find a radius or diameter if I give you circumference or area using the formulas? And the last part, can you use both formulas to find area or circumference? Any questions? No. All right, guys. Well, if you do have questions later, please send them on Remind. Send me a picture of your work. Um, let me know what's going on. If you're confused, the quiz will be up tomorrow, due by Sunday. Again, if you need more time, go ahead and take a little more time. Just let me know. I will not take any points away. Um, and the homework is also due Sunday. But yeah, send me questions. If you need more time, let me know. I will give you more time. I know this is a weird time. And uh, I hope all of you stay safe and healthy. And I'll see you soon.